What's up y'all, it's your girl Stephanie. Today I have my December favorites for you. It is currently 2019. I'm really looking forward to this year. I think it's gonna be a good one. I am optimistic. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna talk about that more probably in the next video, which is going to be my yearly favorite. So right now I just have some products that I've been really into this month. And then of course the next video, which will be coming up very shortly, will be the products I just have been using the most consistently over 2018. So before we get into it, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe below, come join the sisterhood, no matter your true pronoun or gender identity, come join the family. All right, let's get started. The skincare that I'm gonna talk about this month is nighttime skincare, so I'm gonna start off with makeup this time around. So on my eyes currently, I have the Pretty Rich Too Faced palette. This palette, just like right off the bat, packaging wise, is very luxurious. It just feels, like a beautiful jewelry case. Like you open it up and you're expecting to see some sort of Titanic-esque <laughs> necklace in there. But yeah, all the colors in here are so beautiful for New Year's, which I'm kind of bummed because I thought I was gonna take more photos, but on New Year's I went over to uh, a friend's party and I literally didn't take any photos, which is fine. I was just spending time with friends and enjoying, you know, the last couple hours of 2018. You know, I did take a couple like mirror selfies of my outfit. Um, yeah, I'll put that up over here. But other than that, I had no pictures, no videos or anything really from uh, the night. But anyways, this is the eye look that I wore for that night, which is really easy. It was just these two colors here. So I pretty much just used this warm brown, it's cashmere, all up in the crease and all over the lid pretty much. Uh, this is a pretty common look that you've seen from me over and over again. But I mean, the reason why I like this palette in itself is that you have the option of doing this very easy look in like many different ways. Um, and then on the inner corners of my eyes, I wet a brush with some Fix Plus. It's just a little pencil brush. And I use this color Fluent in Diamonds. And this is just a really beautiful gold glitter. Um, there's not much color underneath, if that makes sense. It's just like really chunky glitter. So that's why using something like Fix Plus or even just water, if you just wet your brush, um, and dip into this. It just creates a really beautiful glittery look and you can kind of layer it on any color that you want. So that's why I like this kind of palette. I think this one, um, Diamond Glitterati, which is this pink one over here and Diamonds for Breakfast, those are all a similar formula. And I think Diamond Life is well down here. And you can kind of do a similar look with uh, many different colors. So I actually really recently started using this palette. I've only tried out this one and a little bit of the pinks, um, but I can already tell that this is a very user-friendly palette, I would say, if you wanna try going into more pinks. There's a bunch of nude options, and then at the bottom we have some darker colors and some blues. From this same collection, I have like my current favorite, favorite highlighter. Um, Y'all know I'm very dedicated to the Jackie Aina Artist Couture Highlighter, but this one is just a totally different look. Um, this is the Too Faced Canary Diamond Highlighter. This highlighter is such a unique, beautiful color. It is like this golden, yellow, pink, like there's even almost some purpleness in there. It's really hard to like see. I hope that y'all are actually seeing everything, all the colors being picked up because it just looks really beautiful on the cheek. And I typically like, I'm not the kind of person who likes um, like purple highlighters or kind of like blue or purple or cool tone highlighters. Somehow this has like all these like very, I don't know, it's like a multifaceted highlighter and it really works. And I like how it has these little like kind of micro glitters in there because I do like a highlighter that is glittery so it catches the light. Um, and I have been using, where to go? This brush right here, which is the Too Faced highlighting brush. How cute is that? It's like this little clear handle here. Um, and I just use that on the cheeks and I just, I really hope it's showing up on camera because I went on the Sephora website to look at this highlighter like in their photo and it, even in the photo of the product, it's like you can't take a still photo of this product. Like you really have to see it 
really move and then you'll be able to tell the color because in the product photo on Sephora, it, it looks nothing like it does um, in real life. I would just say if you are interested in checking this out, like either one, just get it because I freaking love this highlighter or go in store and check it out. My favorite nude lip color of the month has been this Milk Makeup Wu-Tang Clan collaboration. This is in Flow. I'm clearly a huge sucker for packaging because this lipstick is like the most badass packaging I have ever, ever seen. First of all, like the outside is so cool. We got the Wu-Tang Clan uh, logo on the top and it's just this really cool magnetic closure. The inside too is a dragon and everything, this whole entire, the whole bullet is so heavy and I don't know, it's so, I, there's no other word for it than badass. Um, and the formula of this lipstick is really great. It's super smooth. It has a nice gloss to it. I've been really enjoying, obviously, um, a little bit more of a moisturizing lip. I feel like when it comes to nudes, I do like it when it is a little bit more moisturizing. It's just a really easy lipstick to put on. It really looks like I haven't used it that many times, but I have. The thing about it is that even though it is kind of a more moisturizing, glossy look, it's very opaque only need a few swipes to put it on, and then I really haven't reapplied it that many times when I wear it. It is a long-lasting uh, moisturizing lipstick, which, you know, isn't always the case for a lot of moisturizing lipsticks. So I think that was really what turned me off about certain lipsticks that are this formula, is that it just wears really easily, but because this is so opaque, it really, it wears beautifully. This is just such an unexpected collaboration. Like, I never thought I would, you know, say Wu-Tang Clan, and lipstick in the same sentence, but I mean, I've been a big fan since I was a little kid. I remember my cousin Nikki burning me 36 chambers. I think he gave that to me probably when I was like in sixth or seventh grade and I would like listen to it on my Walkman like as quietly as possible in my room. Um, so yeah, I've been a big fan for a long time and it's just a really interesting collab. In any case, if you're a fan of Wu-Tang Clan and you're trying to find a nice nude look into this one. Let's talk about one hair product before going into skincare. I have the Orbe Dry Texturizing Spray. So I think in my last video, in my November favorites, I talked about a mousse that I used um, to kind of thicken up up here in my hair, my roots. I don't have super thin hair, but I do have thin hair, um, it can tend to, one, be very, very oily very quickly, and it just is very flat, you know? It doesn't have too much body or fullness up top, which in turn will make it look stringy and just more oily in the end. So I started using this mousse that was a thickening mousse, and it really helped to thicken it up here, obviously, and just make it look a little bit more full and like fill in some space. And then this month, what I started doing is I started using this texturizing spray. So after my hair is all completely dried, um, I'll take some of this and spray it into the root, which will add even more grit to it. And I have been using this brush, I think I just got it off of Amazon, it's a Conair um, teasing brush, and I will just back comb a bit. I don't do this every single day. Um, I'll do it when maybe I'm just like going out and wanting to look a little bit extra nice because I know that back combing is very bad for your hair. But I also feel like the way that I do it, it's not, I'm not excessive about it. And obviously, like maybe you can even tell on my head that there's any kind of extra volume, but for me, I can really tell. Also, my hair tends to be able to last for another day. Typically when I wash my hair and I would style it, which like I really wouldn't even just style it, I would just blow dry it, I wouldn't use that many products. 100% by the next day, even if I use dry shampoo, like I would still just put it up in a bun because it would look kind of stringy. Even if it wasn't like super greasy looking, it just looked kind of not great down. So I would just put it up in a bun. But now since I started to do this, like this combo of using <laughs> like a mousse and also this and a little bit of back combing, like my hair kind of looks the same. It lasts into the next day. So I understand why people do like really major styling and it actually lasts into the next day. I thought because my hair is, you know, all natural, it's not bleached or anything like that, it's it, it's very, very healthy that I would never be able to do this. But yeah, I can actually wear my hair down two days in a row now pretty comfortably 
and I just never thought I could do that before. That's the power of some product. It just really adds like grit to your roots, grit to your hair, um, and just adds really nice texture. Plus it smells awesome. I mean, all Orbe products smell really awesome. All right, y'all, let's talk about some skincare. Here I have the Tatcha Pure One Step Camellia Cleansing Oil. This is a makeup remover. I have the travel size bottle here, or the smaller bottle. There is a larger size than this one. It really takes off face makeup. It just takes it off so easily. So pretty much what you do is just pump a couple pumps into your dry hand, uh, rub your hands together, and then you put it all over your face. And I will say that I like to take my eye makeup off beforehand, so I'll use like a, a bi-layer product to take off the eye makeup. So I'm not using this to take off that part. It's more all the foundation and face makeup. But this oil just breaks it down very easily. I was quite surprised the first time that I used it because I felt like I only used a little bit of product, like it wasn't much. And when I rubbed onto my face, it felt very dry and not uncomfortable. And when I rinsed it off, it just like the oil completely disintegrated and it didn't leave any oiliness on my face. That's the thing about oil cleansers sometimes or like the solid balms sometimes I don't like because some of the formulas of those are like, you know, you put it in your hands, you warm it up and then you put it on. And even when you're washing it off, it leaves like a balmy or oily residue on your face. And to me, that makes it feel like it's not taking all your makeup off because something is being left behind. But when it comes to this one in particular, it really feels like everything's coming off. Obviously I will double cleanse, so then afterwards I'll use another face cleanser. It is called One Step. I'm not sure if they're implying that you don't need to use another cleanser afterwards, but you know, for me, I like to always use another cleanser afterwards. But yeah, this is um, a really great face cleanser, makeup remover oil, if you're looking into something like this. I started using this uh, when I went home for the holidays. I was in, actually before that, I continually use this. So I've been using this for a while actually, cause I started using this just at home here as well. It really only takes one or two pumps for me for like all of my face makeup. So I have a bunch left in there. I, I can't really see how much I've used up, but it's definitely lasted me a long time. Last product in my December favorites, we have the Ul Henriksen Goodnight Glow Retin Alt Sleeping Cream. I feel like I've just been incorporating more and more of this brand's products into my skincare. I really am into every product that I've tried from them. Um, so I'll read a little bit off of Sephora here. So this is actually created with a natural retinol alternative for deep hydration. It targets uh, fine lines and dark spots. It has a powerful concentration of AHAs and bacuchol, bacuchol, bacuchol. Not sure how to say that. Bacuchol. Is a natural alternative to retinol. I just feel like in general, I've been enjoying using this a lot. I know that I've been switching up my skincare quite a bit, but like I said, I've been switching up to using more of Ulla Henriksen products, so yeah. My skin has been quite happy recently, knock on wood. Like after I was in China, like it was not going great. I had all these weird bumps all along over here. Um, I feel like I still have a little bit over here. I think they're just like kind of congested pores, but I really started using more and more of this brand's products and like my skin's been very happy about it. So I'm just gonna keep going with it. All right, y'all, that is it for my December favorites. We are in 2019. You know, I'm not really a huge resolutions person. Like I think it's great to set goals for yourself for a new year. Um, but yeah, I wasn't ever a huge person to be like, kickstart all these new things in a new year. But I truly feel like this year it's, a good time right now to just like reflect on things that I need to improve and things I need to do for myself. 2018 was freaking a rough year for me. I think emotionally, personally, you know, I think I said a little bit of it on camera, but I feel like I wasn't sharing as much of myself with you because I was going through these things and it can be a little bit difficult to be on camera. I feel like when you're not feeling the best. 
So I feel like recently I have taken my self care a little bit more seriously, taken some time for myself, and I'm like pretty ready to jump back in right now because I'm sure a lot of you have noticed I haven't really been posting my videos and stuff. Maybe I sound like a broken record right now because I said this last year, but like I'm really jumping back in. I think one of the biggest things that I need to do is just put out a bunch of videos that I just hadn't done. I don't know, I had some sort of like weird anxiety about putting out some of these videos, just like vlogs and stuff. Like I'm not sure why I've like created this blocker for myself but I have a bunch of vlogs that I just need to put out. Even if they're a few months old, I'm just gonna put them out and stop like weirdly stressing out about it. You know, it's that kind of weird cycle that you put yourself in where you put something off or like you don't think it's something's good enough, but then you're like, I know I need to do this and I want to do this, but it's like as more and more time goes by, it becomes just like more of a, pressure like on your whole being <laughs> um, and I just need to let go and just do it and just release it and move on with my life. So I think that's a pretty good representation of some other parts of my life as well. <laughs> so I'm just trying y'all. Thank you so much for being very understanding this year with me. Um, there's a lot of things that I wanna do this year. I wanna start doing more via vlogs again and just making videos that like I think are cool and trying to build up a team, trying to like work with people to film and expand and not be scared. So that's what I'm trying to do. End rant. Thank you so much for watching this video. <laughs> I got my 2018 yearly faves coming up. I'll probably rant more on that one. Maybe I'll go deeper into it. Um, but yeah, in any case, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't yet, please make sure to subscribe below. I love y'all, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.